Hey my sweet pen friends, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Devin, and in today's video, I wanted to talk about stationary mindfulness and three ways that we can practice it. AKA, instead of a stationary no buy, try this. This is sort of a follow-up video to my declutter videos, as well as my thoughts on the stationary community. So if you haven't seen those videos, I'll have them linked in the cards and in the description box below. At the end of the day, I want to be able to look at my space and know the things that are in it really spark the optimal joy for me. And one of the ways that I've been able to achieve this is by showing and practicing gratitude. This really requires us to have awareness and inventory of what is in our stationary collection. And knowing that this was a goal for me for 2021, I wanted to start the year off right with my declutter challenge. And again, if you haven't seen those videos, I'll have them linked in the cards and in the description box below. The Discord is still up, so if you want to do the challenge on your own, you're more than welcome to join and just kind of go at your own pace. I think the most tangible way for us to show and feel gratitude for the things that we have is to journal about it. It's often what I find myself writing about in my morning pages if I'm using one of my favorite fountain pens or I have discovered a new favorite ink. I like to take some time in my journal to just gush about it and to feel good and to know that I'm enjoying the stationery that's right in front of me. Personally, I know that there have been times where I've fallen in this trap of feeling like I don't have enough and that is a very privileged thing to say and to recognize that and to understand that what I have in my space right now is more than enough, it really brings into perspective of like, wow, I. I am really blessed to have these things and I should really be expressing my gratitude for these things often and consistently. And I don't think it's necessary to journal about your gratitude, that's just the way that I do it. If you're able to really feel and sit in that appreciation for your things when you're using them, then that's more than enough. It's probably no secret that I love Mare Kondo. I think if you haven't read the life-changing magic of tidying up or watched the Netflix series or seen her videos on YouTube, then you need to get on it. If you're unfamiliar with her work, the biggest takeaway that I can share with you from the KonMari method is does it spark joy? And this question has become the primary and most significant criteria for me when I'm acquiring new stationery. Everything that I now bring into my space is screened through this joy test. And if asking yourself, does it spark joy and holding that item, if it feels a little fuzzy and gray, something else that you can do, something that's really helped me is taking an item that I know I already love, something that I would be devastated if it wasn't in my collection anymore, something that I look forward to using. And I just know that there's a lot of positive emotions associated with this item. I'll pick that item up. For example, I have my Twisby RG2. Now, if I'm trying to figure out how I feel about another item, I'll first ask myself how I feel when I hold this item. I feel excited to use it. I look forward to writing. I can't wait to start journaling. So I hold on to that feeling and then I'll pick up another item, let's say, uh, another fountain pen and if I don't get that same feeling to me that's a sign to me that's an indicator that that item is just not for me it doesn't spark joy and sometimes again it can be a little in the middle you might feel on the fence but the more that you practice and ask yourself does it spark joy the clearer and the more defined your taste will appear to be Again, I want to emphasize that it's okay if you don't necessarily pick up on those differences right away. And it's very nuanced. We're talking about feelings. We're talking about emotions. It's a skill that is not really talked about a lot. And I think that's why I very much appreciate Mari Kondo and what she's doing with her work. But when it comes to stationary mindfulness, I feel like it's, it's such a key factor in making sure that there is no excess and we have, again, just what sparks joy. 
A similar test that you can try is the laundry test. Now, when you think about your laundry and your clothes, there are definitely pieces in your closet that you are excited to wear. For me, it's the sweater. I love wearing the sweater. And then there are clothes that I tend to avoid. I don't really mess with them unless it's laundry day and I've used up all my clean clothes. Those are the clothes that you kind of just avoid until you really can't. Well, you want to apply this scenario to your stationery. What items are you excited to use and what items do you tend to ignore until you've run out of something else? I recognize that the assessments that I'm sharing with you are very abstract. And again, that's a skill that you kind of just have to build up over time, really just get in tune with what your heart and your gut are saying, building up your intuition. But I think we have to remember that we are in this hobby, not because it's practical, not because we have to do it, but because of how it makes us feel. Feel, and it makes us feel excited. It makes us feel like we're a part of something. So if that helps, you can start with those emotions and go from there. Something that might be a little bit more practical in its application is the 72 hour rule. And this is a tip that I actually learned from a finance YouTube channel. So if you wanna learn more about money and how to better manage it, I definitely recommend checking out their content and I'll have it linked in the description box below. Essentially though, the 72 hour rule is this idea that if you come across something that you're thinking about buying, wait. Don't buy it yet. Wait 72 hours to see if you still want that thing three days later. It gives you time to clear your mind and really make an emotionally sober decision. And what I mean by this is we can easily get swept up in the excitement and the FOMO surrounding any particular item. And when we can actually give space and time for those emotions to fall away, we're left with how we actually feel about that purchase. Do we still feel good about it? Do we still want to bring this thing into our space? And I feel like that's really important. And yes, it's still a decision based on feeling, but hopefully those feelings are a lot clearer and a lot stronger without all all the excess noise. I would love to hear from you, which of these tips did you find most helpful? And if you're already practicing mindfulness around your stationery, leave your tips in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and feel free to share it with a pen friend who you think might also enjoy it. Don't forget to subscribe and to turn on those notifications. That way you don't miss any of our videos. I do my best to upload here every Wednesday at 8 a.m. PST, so please take care until then. And feel free to enjoy these two videos linked here on the screen. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.